We actually just need some sewing pins and we need, uh, we need a measuring tape. All right, let's get our shirt ready. And we're gonna start with our shirt right side in like uh like we're wearing it to the club not not inside out at least not yet we got to take our measuring tape first and uh we got to measure it now my shirt is roughly 16 inches or, or 41 centimeters for all my european guys uh from the bottom down here all the way up to uh the armpit seam and i'm gonna put five pins in here that's ten five pins in here as kind of uh as temporary placeholders depending on the size of uh, of your shirt and the length of it it, it might vary a little bit so if you put four pins in there or if you put six pins in there instead of exactly five it's totally okay it's not a big deal it's totally normal now I've got my pins all in here going from the bottom to the top I have a pin at one inch I have a pin at four inches I have a pin at eight inches another pin at 12 inches and this last pin up here is at 16 inches. And if your measurements come out a little bit differently because let's say your shirt is bigger or it's longer, again, that's totally okay, it's normal. If your shirt ends up being, I don't know, let's say 18 inches or 20 inches, whatever that is, just keep going up in uh, in intervals of four inches. Now these pins right here, what uh, what are they doing? Well, they're currently doing absolutely nothing. We wanna use these pins to completely transform and change the appearance of this dress shirt. And uh, being strategic with these pins will allow us to do exactly that. I personally like a more V tapered uh, V shape to my dress shirt. So I like the pins in the middle here to be pushed in farther into the shirt than the bottom and the top pins. These ones here I come out have uh, I have come out a little bit farther to give it uh, give it a nice hourglass shape. That gives me the fit that I want and the fit that I'm looking for. But yo, this is all about you right now. This is where the sky is absolutely the limit. If you want your shirt tighter or looser in certain spots, then kind of play around with these measurements and the location of all these pins until until you. You get that fit that you're looking for. Well, here's what I'm gonna do on this shirt. On my shirt, I've got a half an inch for this first pin down here at the bottom. This pin is one inch, one and a half inches, one inch, and a half an inch. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. This side here, this side is good to go. I did the exact same thing. And I'm not doing the sleeves on this shirt. The sleeves are actually okay. But what you want to do for the sleeves, well, hang on, let me let me back up a little bit. You can absolutely tailor the sleeves on any dress shirt, and what you would end up doing is you just keep pinning all the way up here through the sleeves in the same increments of four inches. Now that we got pins in both sides here, all we're gonna do is we're gonna try it on and we're gonna see if we like the fit. We're gonna see how we feel about it. If you're comfortable with it, then you're good. You are good to go. But there might be a couple of these pins that, you know, they might kind of be a little bit tighter in some spots, looser in other spots. Yo, play around with this. Move them around until you feel good. Now we're gonna take these pins out and we're gonna flip our shirt inside out. Now we're gonna take the exact same measurements that we did before and we're gonna put our pins back in the same spot. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like, but when I put these pins back in here, I'm gonna make sure to put them in the right way. And by the right way, I mean like they're facing, the, they're on the right side of the shirt and they're actually like facing the right direction. My sewing machine, it's gonna be right here. So my shirt is gonna be fed through my machine just like that. So when I put my pins in here, I'm gonna make sure the head of my pin is facing that direction and the pointy side is facing that way. So that way I can just pull it out as I go along. All right, this side is ready to rock and good to go. And again, my machine's gonna be right here, so it's gonna be super easy. I'm just gonna pull these pins out as I go along. Boom, done. Now you might think that you wanna do the other side here, put the pins on the same side. Well, you don't really want to do that. Here's the problem that you're going to run into. Yeah, your machine is going to be going through it just like that. Machine. But when you get to the other side, my machine is still right here. Now I got to move all this stuff over here. My machine is here. Well, look, you have all this fabric all down here, but all that free space all down there. So all this fabric just kind of gets bunched up underneath your machine. So you're doing your thing. Well, and then it's just getting all crumpled and it's annoying. Here's a super easy fix for that. We're actually going to pin 
the other side of our shirt, just like this. So now, since we're gonna have our pins on this side of our shirt, we get the same thing. Going through our machine, pulling the pins out super easy. The bulk of our fabric is over there. Got all this free space over here. Boom, just like that, we are good to go. We got our pins on both sides of our shirt here. This is honestly one of the biggest game changers when it comes to tailoring. In this step, we're taking this line that we made with our pins, and we're just gonna use these pins as a guide to sew a new straight stitch. Now come, come, come a little bit closer, come a little bit closer. I, uh, I gotta show you something. This pin right here, what do we do with this pin? How do we, how do we connect uh, the seam that we're making right here? How do we connect this seam with, uh, with our armpit seam here? What if we're tailoring the sleeves of our shirt? What do we do? I'll explain this part super quick. It's, it's not hard at all. Me personally, I like high armholes in my dress shirts. I absolutely hate it when they give me bat wings. So what I actually like to do is I like to, uh, I like to come up pretty aggressively with this pin here. I like to kind of angle it out at a 50 degree angle, give or take a couple, uh, couple of degrees. And I'm not touching the sleeves on this shirt, but if you were tailoring the sleeves on your shirt, all you have to do, let's say your first pin on your sleeve is right here. All you have to do is just keep going. Just keep going straight through that armpit seam there. Go all the way through and just connect the dots. That's all we're doing. That is all we are doing is just connect the dots. Just like kindergartners do. <laughs> okay, and now that we got that part down, what kind of needle are we gonna use? Um, a universal needle 80-12. Why? Because it's a really versatile needle and it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like the jack of all trades for sewing machine needles. And what kind of thread are we gonna use? Polyester thread. Why? Oh, hang on, I studied for this one. Um, oh, because polyester thread is gonna be able to move and bend and stretch with us so that we can wear this shirt to the club and it's not gonna blow a seam if we're dancing. Good job. You're listening. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I haven't stepped foot into a club in like 13 years. See this guy right here? Are you afraid? Yeah, most people are deathly afraid of sewing machines, but yo, you do not have to be afraid of this thing at all. This thing can do a ton of different things, but what if you just wanna make your clothes not look crappy on you? Well then all you have to really do is learn like, I don't know, four different settings and then you're good. Now the fundamental concept for just about every single sewing machine is pretty much the same. It asks you three questions. What type of stitch do you wanna make? How long do you want that stitch to be? And how wide do you want that stitch to be? Answer number one, what type of stitch? A straight stitch. Answer number two, how long? Well, anywhere from about uh, about one millimeter to three millimeters. And answer number three, how wide do we want our stitch to be? Yeah, it, uh, it actually, it doesn't matter. We're not gonna be messing with the width of our stitch at all. This setting right here, this is actually for another stitch, which we'll get to later, but for now, we can honestly just like put this at whatever we want. Does not matter in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> if your face looks like this, I get it, you're probably super confused. If you've never used a sewing machine before or done any of this stuff before, you can go get caught up all down in the description. I set my stitch length dial to about two and a half, meaning each stitch is gonna be two and a half millimeters in length. And to be honest, anything between like one and three, you're gonna be just fine. I also check my stitch tension, which means how loose or how tight those stitches are gonna be. Stitch tension is, it's, it's kind of confusing if you don't know how it works. It actually works in like the complete opposite way that you think that it would. So for thinner materials like uh, like t-shirts, you want a tighter tension. And for thicker materials like denim, you want a looser tension. I like my teeth like I like my women white. When you sew a straight stitch, you want to make sure that you look at the right spot and that actually means not looking at the needle. That's a super common rookie mistake and it's actually really easy to do because it just it makes sense. It's moving fast and it's shiny and your eyes are just drawn to it. But there's a metal plate on your machine called the seam guide. You actually want to look at that. Now that we have our straight stitch on our shirt, it already looks so much better. It just looks all nice and fitted instead of a instead of a dress shirt that like SpongeBob would wear. Now let's take that extra fabric there and we're actually gonna cut it all off, leaving about five eighths 
of the fabric left, which is gonna be called the seam allowance. And don't panic, the seam allowance, it's actually just that distance between that new stitch that you just made and then the edge of the shirt. And we would actually be done, but uh, we, we, we gotta do something about that edge. What's gonna happen is this edge is actually gonna fray on us when we wash it. So what we wanna do is we wanna finish it. And you can do that in one of two ways. We can either use some pinking shears that are actually gonna cut a zigzag pattern in this shirt, or we could use my go-to method, which is the zigzag stitch. And this right here, this is when actually the stitch width comes into play. What it does is it actually moves the needle from side to side as you sew in a straight line, creating kind of an overlapping zigzag pattern back and forth over the edge of our clothes. By back and forth, I more so mean like side to side. What I usually do is I'll set the stitch width, I'll set it all the way up. Mine goes all the way to five, which is the highest or the, the highest setting possible. So it's gonna give me the biggest width possible between uh, between the zigzags. This shirt, oh my gosh, this shirt fits so much better. And if you just did this, if you stopped right here, you would already stand out from like 90% of the guys wearing dress shirts. But no, 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 we are not done yet. Let's start with some sewing pins, a measuring tape, and an iron. We are starting with our shirt right side in instead of inside out because for this step we want to make sure that we like the measurements of these darts first. But yes, we're, we're going to be putting the darts on the inside of the shirt, not the outside. Now, measure your shirt and see how far it is from shoulder to shoulder, or actually more specifically like armpit seam to armpit seam. Now mine looks like it's about 24 inches or so. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start my darts seven inches from each of these sides. And why seven inches you might ask? Well, for me personally, I found that having my darts start seven inches uh, from that seam is what ends up giving me the best result. But your results might completely vary. You might em end up doing six inches. You might end up doing, let's say, nine inches. So seven inches isn't necessarily a hard and fast rule. Now I've got these two pins at the top of my shirt here. These are gonna be, uh, I'm gonna use these as placeholders and these are gonna be the top of my dart. And then I'm gonna take my measuring tape and I'm actually gonna use it to make a line all the way down my shirt to make sure that this line is straight. And right down there, boop. Okay, so we've got our placeholder pins in here in all four corners there. And what you can do to make sure that they're actually the same length and the right length, uh, what you can do is you can take your measuring tape and you can measure them. Mine are both 18 inches long. So that way you know if one comes out at 18 inches and the other one comes out at like 19 inches, you're not gonna be walking around like Quasimodo. And I'm actually gonna turn these placeholder pins so that they're actually going vertically with my shirt. I'll explain why. Now these placeholder pins, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take both of them and we're gonna pinch them and run them right between our fingers and you're gonna take it like that and you're gonna pull it and you're gonna turn it on its side so that you've got a nice edge like that. It doesn't need to be ironed or anything, but you wanna make sure that you pinch and pull so that you get at least like a, a decent edge, a, a decent edge, just like, just like that. Now we want our dart to be wider at the bottom of our shirt and kinda of start to taper off as it gets to the top. So on my shirt, we're gonna be putting about five pins in here, not including these two placeholder pins. Now, not including my placeholder pin down here, these two pins at the bottom, they're both gonna be a half an inch. This pin right here, this is actually, uh, this is the middle of my dart here, but this is still gonna be a half an inch. And these next two pins up here, these are a quarter of an inch. This is where my taper is gonna start. And then my top placeholder pin, that's all the way at the top here. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're really just gonna start to just make it disappear, just make it go away right when we get to the top. Just ease it out. Try it on and just like the measuring video, just kind of see how you feel about it. If it's too tight in your midsection or too loose, then just kind of play around with the measurements of these pins and do what you feel is comfortable. This is what's gonna be comfortable for me in this shirt, but your mileage is going to completely vary. So these are not hard and fast rules by any means. Oh, and don't be shocked. This will most likely be the very first time that you felt your shirt touching your skin in the front 
and in the back. It's gonna be like a little bit uncomfortable because you're used to the bagginess of a dress shirt. I know I was, so as a heads up, that's gonna happen. Take it off, flip it inside out, and put your placeholder darts back in. Pinch that line that we did before, like we've made before, and then iron it all down. Don't worry, this part's like super quick once you get it all down, or you actually, you'll end up flying through this. When you are done, you want to ask yourself one question and one question only. Do your darts look exactly like mine do? Yeah? Okay, good, then you're good. But if they don't, you wanna make sure that they look exactly like this, because we're doing the exact same thing like we did in the measuring video. We're setting ourselves up for success later on. Our sewing machine is gonna be right here. It's gonna go right over the edge. So these pins are all placed perfectly so we can just yank them all out as we go along. Normally what you would do is you would set yourself up for success on one side, but on the other side, this is the back side of my shirt here. These pins are facing up. These pins would also be facing up, but then we'd have our fabric just kind of all bunched up underneath our machine. Uh-uh, we get to skip all of that drama. We're just gonna pull them out, boom, good. And now it is time to sew. We're just putting a normal straight stitch in this guy just like we did in the side seams with the same settings. Back stitch the bottom of your dart and then kind of kind of go slow at first if you need to. If you got to kind of ease yourself into it. I've been doing this for a number of years now and I still kind of take my time on darts. So if you're going slow, don't worry, it's all good. Once you get just past that middle pin in your dart where it's going to start to taper, ease your way out and kind of be mindful of that placeholder pin because you want your dart to pretty much be gone by the time you get up there. And as you start to kind of approach that placeholder pin, your dart, you're gonna be sewing right on the edge of your garment. And then when you backstitch up here, backstitch like twice, maybe three times because too many backstitches it's gonna end up making it look really sloppy. You're gonna have a uh, kind of a dimple in the back of it and you don't, you don't want that. What some people do is they'll actually stop. They'll stop and they'll hand tie their darts at the top up here, but uh, um, I, don't, I don't like to do that. And that is all there is to it, folks. We took this generic shirt from Target and made it look fantastic. These videos total were what, like, 17 minutes, which is about like how long this whole project will take you. I will see you on the other side. ST out, deuces!